Okay, we have the unit circle. Now, I like the unit circle because it goes well with sine, cosine, tangent, and there's a lot of interesting things to go around with it. So let's check this out. Okay. Uh, questions? I'll have you do these on your own, but basically this kind of goes into detail. Here's two triangles. Here's how you would solve it, um, what you would do with it. So it's just kind of talking about the triangle using trigonomic, uh, trigonometric ratios and fun stuff like that. All right, so radian measure. Here's our unit circle. Well, in the beginning of a circle here, here's the different degrees on the circle. As you can see, the circle goes all the way to 360. Degrees, a unit um, of angle measure, a full circle is divided into 360 degrees and a right angle is 90 degrees. So we have the right angle here, just like that. And the central angle, angle that forms when two radii meet at the center. So the dot right there in the middle, that's the center. Okay, so one radian here is right here. And radian. So um, radian would be considered the measure of an angle in which um, when it's drawn as a central angle, it subtends an arc whose length equals the length of the radius in the circle. Okay. All right, now we have the different measurements on the circle. So this is a unit circle here where you'll see these different measurements on the unit circle. And when it's asking you a question like sine and cosine things, they'll often refer to this part right here. Okay, the circumference. And here's just the example of the circumference of our circle equals it two pi r. Okay. videos. I'll have you watch that on your own. And this, let's, let's go back to this real quick. So these the different, the radians match the degrees on the unit circle. So oftentimes you'll see like the degrees on the unit circle and the radian typically will match the degrees. So you'll see here we have the radian two pi over three and it matches with the 120 degrees and so on. So you'll see this often on the unit circle too. Okay. So the tended angle is the angle formed by an object that is at a given external point or arc. Arc length, the distance around the arc outer edge of the circle. So that's the arc length is right here. And I did do a mini lesson in geometry about the arc length and like the radius and all this stuff in the circle. Arc length again, just shows you what it is here. There's a red part. Here's how you solve it. And here's what it is, eight pi over three. And that would be the angle of 60 degrees. So then when you see 60 degrees, you'll see it match with eight pi over three. The terminal side, we have, let's see a straight line that is rotated around the origin in either a positive counterclockwise or a negative clockwise direction. Okay. Co-terminal angles, two angles in standard position that have the same terminal side, same angle, just separated by an addition rotation, addition rotation around the circle. Coordinate planes, you'll just have to figure out the angles for this one here. So as you can see, you're making the coordinate planes. Here's the angle. Here's what the radian is. Okay. And here we go. We have more. You have the degree here, you have the terminal side. Clockwise is showing you here's their angle, here's what the radian is again. Quadrant one, reference angle is in quadrant one, it is equal to the given angle. So here's a quadrant one. Quadrant two, usually you'd have to do some sort of subtraction problem here because it's the negative. 
So like we have 180 minus and then pi. And then again, we'd have to do some sort of subtraction here because we're still in the negative. As you can see, we're still subtracting. In quadrant four, again, we're in positive and negative. So you would still have to do some sort of subtraction problem here as well. Okay. Now we're moving on to more angles. This, I'll have you just answer this question on your own as well. Unit circle again. Now we're reviewing what it is. So the unit circle, here's the actual definition of it, um, would be the, a circle of radius one with a center at the origin of the coordinate plane. So Katoa, that's a good abbreviation. And here is how we calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent here. So these are good um, equations, and you'll definitely want to Make sure you keep those because those will come in handy. Okay, so now we have our next part, hypotenuse. And we're calculating uh, cosine and tangent here. But if you know the unit circle, you know the radians, you know the angles, then calculating this will be fairly easy. As long as you're constantly referring back to the unit circle, you should not have that much trouble calculating. Now we have see. Okay, more unit circle here. I'll have you answer this. Uh, a special right angle. Then we have the 3, a 30, 60, 90 angle transcribed in the unit circle, as you can see, 30, 60, 90, like that. 45, 45, 90 inscribed in the circle, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. Here's the radians. Trigonometric ratios for special right angles. Here, this is just giving you the reference for them, so you'll definitely need to remember these. These are also part of the unit circle as well. You will probably see those on your unit circle. Okay. And then here's the unit circle, just like this. It's all drawn out here. And it is, let's see, it's all written out here. So then you have the zero degrees, the 180 degrees, our diameter. I'm going to go to cross diameter showing you. And then here's the different points on the unit circle. So as you can see, they're described on this part right here, the different points. Go back to this one, you'll see the different points, you'll see the angle, you'll see the radian. All of this is on the unit circle. You'll get a lot of questions like this. Um, as long as you have a unit circle that has that's fully filled out like this or has most of this information, answering the questions will be fairly simple because you'll know exactly what to do for it. So let's move on to the next part. Hmm, okay, here's our unit circle. I want you to figure out tangent here. Pythagorean identity, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Hmm, okay. We'll go to the next part. Okay, this is ratio signs. And it's just showing you what's going on in the different quadrants. Okay, here's how you would solve it. It's just going through a different example for you. Okay. And hopefully that clears up the unit circle a bit. But like I said, definitely get a copy of the unit circle. Have it with you at all times when answering questions. It will definitely make it a lot easier for you.